pleasant good evening Trinidad and Tobago it is by my time two minutes after nine according to Facebook my biggest following my audience is at nine o'clock so all this time I'm fighting up to do this video at eight o'clock and it turns out that more people watch it nine o'clock after the video than at eight o'clock when I do it so I'm doing it at nine o'clock allows me to go to the gym eat some dinner and chill. So, um, tonight, so many things to discuss. And watching the conversation root itself around me, I wonder where do we go from here? I named this video a Gordian knot. I can tell you what a Gordian knot is, but I want to actually give you facts and not my. Not my definition. A Gordian knot is an extremely difficult or involved problem. I want to know the history. So let's take a look at that. That sounds boring, eh? God, Gordian knot. Knot that gave its name to a proverbial term for a problem solvable only by bold action. In 333 BC, Alexander the Great, that's my ancestor, on his march through Anatolia, reached Gordium, the capital of what I want to assume is Phrygia. There he was shown the chariot of the ancient founder of the city, Gordius, with its yoke lashed to the pole by means of an intricate knot with its end hidden. According to tradition, this knot was to be untied only by the future conqueror of Asia. In the popular account, probably invented as appropriate to an impetuous warrior, Alexander sliced through the knot with his sword, but in earlier versions, he found the ends either by cutting into the knot or by drawing out the pole. The phrase cutting the Gordian knot has thus come to denote a bold solution to a complicated problem. In other words, it's not just what you see but what you see beyond, I think, that matters. Yeah? So, we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have Gordian knots of our own. We have these conversations regularly. We do them nightly. I do a radio show on a Thursday, now on a Sunday. Um, they want us to do an every morning show from 6 to 9. I don't know if I'm up to that anymore, and I'll tell you why. And that's why today, I posted on my Facebook that there will come a time, there may come a time when all of this, I could just take a break. And there could come a time when, and I said, I told you if this page goes dark, if I deactivate this profile, don't panic. Others will continue the work. I've trained a lot of people. There are a lot of people with open eyes and open minds. Um, for the past decade and a half, I've been questioning the amalgamated security justice on time contract. It is I that has forced the issue of building the magistrate court in the jail or up next to the jail. And I see the chairman of the PEP putting out a post on that issue today. And I'm proud. I'm proud to see that other people are waking up and thinking it through and speaking out. But the problem is, and it remains, do we have enough critical thinkers in Trinidad and Tobago to solve this problem? They had a movie, A Bug's Life, was it A Bug's Life or Ants? Where the leader of the ants was telling the generals that control the ants that if we allow them to speak up and speak out, they may realize that they outnumber us a million to one. And that would be a, con a conundrum for them. Because if the people of Trinidad and Tobago, let's, let's take for an example that mythical, mythical place, Beatlam. Police put out a post today. There is a sneeze brewing in my house. 
police put out a post today that they bracing for a war between Betham and East Port of Spain because two Betham gang members, I want to assume, were killed last night. Now, I don't understand how the police service can't just disarm the gangs. I don't understand how the government and the police service, the Ministry of National Security, the Chief of Defense Staff, I don't know yet how come they don't know how to disarm a community. It's done all over the world, but not in Trent Tobago, because in Trent Tobago it's science. In Trent Tobago, Camilla could spend $800 million on a building Manning spent $900 million to build. So Manning spent $900 million to build Chancery Lane, and which was going to be offices, and Kamala spent a further $800 million on it, making it $1.7 billion for a building that air worth $100 million, Chancery Lane. Kamala annexed it to the San Fernando Hospital to say this is the new San Fernando Hospital, while all the work still continues in the old San Fernando Hospital. And to the people who believed that, look, we get a hospital. But that wasn't what the $1.7 billion was for. The $1.7 billion is not for you, Junior Sammy, getting the contract to build Mosquito Creek. It's not for you. That's for Junior Sammy. And Junior Sammy is one of them. And all of them know how to share the pie. Chancery Lane and San Fernando General Hospital. It's not about you. Fire truck, you. You don't matter. You are one of them. You, is, you are the barking, baying, brain jackass who they stick and chuck and suffer. Suffer, 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 suffer. We share a post today. We share a post today about people lining up in a hallway for eye clinic. And I guess that that hallway is about 40 feet long. And there are people lined all the way down the left, turn and all the way down the right, beyond what we could see, lining up for eye clinic in the San Fernando General Hospital. We spent today 14 million dollars on that. Just today. Tomorrow 14 million more. The day after 14 million more. And it's not for you. It's not for you. So we could call them crook. And we could call them bandit. We have some disgusting lawyers in this country. They say the closest word in the English language to lawyer is liar. And a lawyer is a paid liar. And there's some disgusting lawyers and nasty, unethical professionals in the accounting profession and the legal profession who sold their soul. And they don't care about you. They want to be rich. They want money. They want to stunt. They want to fart in flavors. Like Ben and Jerry's. They don't care about you. They don't piss on you, eat you, kill you, stand up on your, on your rotten corpse to get rich. They don't care. Business community, the Chamber of Commerce, Trent Tobago Manufacturers Association. Nobody cares about you. And you've allowed that. All the people that were in that line this morning, in that hospital, they said to the powers that be, you could do us what you want. We have a problem with it. We will line up here and beg you to steal our money and give it to your friends and in exchange, if you could, give you all the medical treatment also. And it's wrong. Because the black people in Bethan that killing the black people in East Port of Spain, while the black people in East Port of Spain willing to kill back the black people in Bethan, they're all assholes. They're all fools. They are suffering, frustrated, optionless, hopeless, living lives of squalor, degradation, terror, violence, madness. They live that. They live that every minute of every day. And once every five years, they line up like the asses that they are, to ratify their condition. And say, we appreciate the abuse. 
go ahead, thief out all the money from the country, leave us in squalor and desperation, do not secure the borders so that we can import guns in massive quantities and use them to kill one another. A police officer told me something recently, but he's not the only police officer that told me this. That a lot of the crime and a lot of the murder and a lot of the killings that take place in this country take place by people trained by the state. Soldiers, police, coast guard, law enforcement. We have no way to track a sloppy killer, much less a trained one. And in a country where we have reactive law enforcement, where your hands to dead and somebody called to report your dead body for police to reach. In a country like that, when the police reach and they have 600 picking around you, looking at you, checking out where the blood flow in, standing up in all the evidence, and they know the longer they take to come, the more the breeze will blow, the rain will fall, and any chance of them finding out who may have been motivated to put those bullets in your ass is gone. So a 3% interdiction rate, and of that interdiction rate, a 90% failure rate in court means we want people to murder each other. This is murder by design. The government and the opposition are very educated people. They're not fools. Kamala gave herself silk. She gave her partner in crime, Anna and Ram Logan, silk too. So now, any shit snake lawyer in the country could have silk. Kamala did no matter of any value, of any importance, to deserve the title senior counsel, but this is the Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of do what the hell you like, land. The helicopter pilots in this country have not been paid for months. National security helicopters. They've not been paid for months. One of them, I understand, took the man, to, took the government to court, and the government is refusing to honor court order. It's a crazy country. But they sit down there together and stunt for you. And you, brain dead and foolish, taking their stunt in. When Kamala draped herself in that hijab, I thought to myself, what happens in this country is unfair to my people. Watching the people ignore the copy and paste media warmed my heart. Watching them ignore Sat and Kamala and all the bullshit and the stunt and the and who get what work and who didn't get what, you know what? So I tell myself it's, it's one of two things. It's either Trinidadians have reached the point where you can't fool them no more, which is good. Or Trinidadians have reached the point where they don't care anymore, which is frightening. I'll tell you why. 1990. When Yassin Abu Bakr staged his coup, Trinidadians on the whole stepped back and didn't join him in his madness because we wanted to be law abiding people. I am fighting for my country now because then murder was a rare thing. Now, murder has to be gruesome, grotesque, it has to be new and interesting. The killing with a fish hook through the ears. That'll be something that we ain't seen before for it to even get any traction anywhere. We is a murderous nation, yeah? Killing, come now, man. Two chicken and chips and a coke, so I take him out. You see how people talk like that? It's too easy to kill people in Trinidad and Tobago. It's too easy to get away with murder. You know why? Because Trinidadians don't care. They don't care if you dead, you know. they don't care if I dead. What's your own contents is the rule, you know. Nobody cares about nobody. They will make fuss and noise. Asami was a pretty girl, light skin. Pink skin murder still gets 
attention. The little red girl in I am. If she was black, it wasn't going to make that much mileage. Arm in arm and foot in foot and hip in hip and all them other stunting organizations. It wasn't going to match for she. But she had pink skin. And pink skin worries people with power. Because if they start killing pink skin people, people could be in trouble. So we must make it look like we are, that is unacceptable. Murder is unacceptable. Murder is not unacceptable in Trinidad. Nigga killing nigga. Day and friggin' night. Nobody care. Nobody care. Nobody cares. We, you, you don't get in a state of emergency. You don't get in a state of concern. You have a jackass for a prime minister. And he is more intelligent than the jackass minister of national security. Who has two sidekicks being paid. You don't even know their names. You know how I know you don't know their names? Because I don't know their names. And I know things about this country historians don't know. I know a lot. And I am not motivated to know. Who are the other two jackasses working with Dylan? I don't care. I don't care. I, they're stunting. Salary. Hold up blue lights. Friends and family. Be a PNN. Last night we did a live video with his grandmother. Who the hospital, either through negligence or otherwise, may have caused the death of her grandchild. And yesterday, she had nobody to turn to. Nobody cared. She was posting on Facebook the details of how this child died. And nobody was caring. Nobody gave a damn. So I called her live and allowed her and her husband to tell the story to my fleeting followers. Who? And thankfully, we have Ali G, who's the head of our overseas chapter, a Trini who has escaped this shithole. Ali G is gone. Ali G lives a beautiful life in New York City. Why Ali G? is caring about Trinidad and Tobago the way she does? I don't know. Ali G begged last night on my live video, Trinidadians, to help raise $7,000 that that woman need, needed to pay for a second autopsy to know to find out how her grandchild died. And it was torture to get her money. And Ali G, and I watched her go to work late this morning. So she, chances are she took some stick for that. And she just wanted to make sure. We ain't get the whole 7000 We come close. I think we get about $5,500. But she wanted to make sure that that woman and that doctor got that money. And that's great. That's brilliant. But we can't do that for everybody. We can't do that for the mothers and the wives and the two. Creole. You know what is called black people in this country, boy? I used to... They, they, Go in club coconuts and hear them refer to black people in the most disgusting ways. And I think to myself, how could this be in a country where black people control the country? You're the prime minister. You have a black president, a black prime minister. The prime minister tell you he's the blackest man in Trinidad. He said, mommy, how could it be that a government that is willing to go and spend billions of dollars by hostile in Australia to make sure that one man get a kickback, just one beer and finance it, share that among the boys, among the brethren. That same money that you spent by hostile, if you had spent that thousands of millions of dollars in Beatham and Laventon and East Porter Spain, you wouldn't need to be stunting with more ships. We would need more Coast Guard and more army and more government boots. You see, when you watch a little picky head pick me with nothing, nothing, we have no hope. To be a black poor man in Trinidad and Tobago is worse than being a dog or a snake. I watched a gentleman get on on a post last night 
They found snakes in the maternity ward and they killed the snakes and get them out of the ward. And the man throwing a tantrum and a hissy fit. Why did they kill the snakes? And I'm trying to explain to the jackass, this is a hospital. What care done for you to send for snake busters? They had a deal with it. Unfortunately, the snake is in the wrong place, in the wrong time. But that guy will not be posting about the two picnic that get killed last time. What? Why you kill two nigga? We won't have that as a post. Not even black people post that anymore. It's not fashionable to like black people. It's not fashionable to care about them. If this is Ramona, who grandchild their last name was Abud, it will be a different story. I'm telling you, hear me clear. And why is that? Or Thompson, a very white sounding name. And why is that? Why would that be the condition? Is it that the race of people that invented science, did you know that Africa gave the world arithmetic, math, science, astronomy? Black people! It is because of black people I could talk to you live. They changed the world. When white people were still living in caves, black people had society. Yes, slavery broke them. I understand that. But slavery is not breaking you now. And I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. And this is why I can't be in politics much longer because I'm rubbing up against some institutional lies. And, and is Philip having to ask Philip, do you want votes or are you trying to educate and liberate people? Because what was your role? And I don't want no job. So when I see bullshit about religion, I'm going to tell Trinidad and Tobago something. All religion is bullshit. You don't want to hear it. But all man-made religion, all of them, and I am a baptized Catholic who did confirmation, and I know that my, I have, the archbishop is my friend, and I have priests who are friends, and I want to tell you something, religion is bullshit, all religion, all of it, none of it is real, there are no flying monkeys, there are no people living in heaven looking down on the world trying to sprinkle Pixie dust, all of that bullshit. Bullshit. We've written history to make it so that we could tell you that if you take enough stick in this life, when you go in the next life, we will give you virgins. That's bullshit. It's all bullshit. And I'm sad because I grew up in a church. I, I, I wrote a book. I have a book called O'Connor Street. And O'Connor Street is two streets from St. Teresa's Church. And I grew up in St. Teresa's Church. I was an archelite. I was in the youth group. I was in the choir. I did first communion there. I did confirmation there. I, I, I was the youngest covenant member of the Living Water community for a while. And I was almost in the seminary. That's how much I was into religion. So you could imagine when I found out that religion was bullshit. Kind of gave... No. You can't say this in Trinidad when hijab and Hindu politics dominated the news. We still believe in bullshit on a very high level in Trinidad and Tobago. So you have to tell yourself, if you want to be politics, you have to lie to people. If you stopped threatening children with Satan, the devil, and hell, in one generation, all religion did. All. If you stopped threatening impressionable little children that a blue-eyed white man with blonde hair from the Middle East, he was the only one, the rest of them was kind of black and dark, I know. My family come from there. If you told little, if you stopped telling little children, and I mean, I read a post once, eh, and it, it hurt me the, the truth of the post, he said, this woman worked three jobs. This woman, black like the ace of spades, working three jobs 
to put presents under the Christmas tree for her little son who she loves so much. And she must tell him that a jolly fat white man came down the chimney and left that there for him. We live so many lies. And it is all of these confounding lies that's tying up our people. Our people in Trinidad and Tobago have no idea what is what. So we just pile on the bullshit. We pile it on. I want to tell you something. I am going to be the first politician that will tell you the truth about everything. You can decide if what you prefer to vote for is comforting lies, do that. But it is time now, because listen, eh? when I found out religion was bullshit, I decided that the time that I used to spend praying to an imaginary being floating above in space who is capable of flinging, this is how the church said it, flung the stars into the sky. Science could tell you that our sun, our sun, which is the biggest thing in our universe, is a dot compared to other suns and other galaxies. There are more, there are more galaxies in our corner of the universe than there are grains of sand on every breach on planet Earth. There are more galaxies. A galaxy has a sun and a collection of planets around it. They are, they, it is incalculable. They say that the universe is ever expanding. And some of you, like me, my parents, if my mother here that I say, and she beat me, 51 years old, I get next to the belt. My mother is a pillar of the church. She's cook for every event, make, line, help, but spend Passover with living waters, and I understand. I understand, I'm sorry, but we need the truth now to set us all free. We need now, and don't get me wrong, eh? when I found out, then I decided I will just help people. Started off with orphans, and we expanded to the homeless, and then we included the disabled. We formed an organization called the Jericho Project that has never been funded. It's never had a bank account. It's 25 years old. And it's never had a bank account. And it's done things and created things in this country without beating, without beating, ringing an alarm and beating your chest. Last night I had to argue with a woman who was telling me that when you do good, you must hide it. I said, but why would you hide it? You must share that you're doing good so other people could think that doing good is fashionable and doing good too. When the Jericho Project was at its heyday, we spun off little organizations. My cousin Don Bideshi formed Namaste Foundation and Junior Sami and the crew financed some little um, Indian children in South and they created One for One Foundation. Whatever Jericho doing, they're doing too and I was happy because Jericho couldn't go national. We couldn't reach San Fernando. We couldn't do what Don was doing with Namaste. So it was working out well. It was working out well and I was happy to see other people doing what we're doing. Myself and a girl named Melissa Janu came up with this thing called Care Packages. One year, about 15 years ago. And we just raised funds with members of Jericho. And we put shampoo and towels and person, we said personal hygiene products in a bag. You got a towel, you got shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, razor, toothbrush, lotion. Women got feminine napkins and stuff and we distributed it in Port of Spain. Now by then the vagrants, the homeless people knew me and my name. And one of them just watched me and he tears in his eyes. He said, you already see us as people. Because nobody ever did that before. Care packages. Care packages gone international. A child from Trinidad who saw what we were doing wrote it as his study and it was copied in the school away and the school and it's becoming a thing. Care packages. Jericho Project in Trinidad did that. Jericho, the, this little organization that continues to this day. Saturday we're meeting again every year. Every year we have an event for all the orphans in Trinidad and Tobago. And every year we go to the government and every year the government have a different excuse as to how they can't help the orphans of Trinidad and Tobago. But we did. Justice for Children marched three years in a row that forced the government to give subventions to those homes. Because prior to the advent of the Jericho Project, there was no subventions for the homes, even though the courts was putting children in private homes. But anyway, this woman was telling me 
She will never vote for me. And then I said, babe, that's all right. That's cool. That's okay. And she said, um, and then I realized, so I went and check on her profile. I said, who is this jackass that's so motivated to argue with me? And then I realized she working for George Abood. And I had to laugh. Because the same Gerald Abood, who only just kick up for his comments to stupid holidays. And by the way, he damn right. And it's his opinion. So get off the boy back. He may be a cat. You're a cat. I'm a cat. Let every cat have the comment. That same Gerald Abood joined the Jericho Project and helped us go and give that same little 1% that some of these people talking about used to come with us and go where we would go to find people all in this country, Valencia, Sangre Grande, places where people have, they, they have less than nothing. Less than nothing. I, I, I expose Gerard now. After being exposed to the Jericho Project, Gerald Abood started the Starlight Foundation that matches funds that builds houses for poor people. And I'm watching all these stunting jackasses that call him 1% and gain him stick. And I say to myself, why you don't just tell them what you do? That I know. Because I out there a long time. So I have to tell this woman, if it wasn't for us saying this is what we do, all of these people who follow what we do and do for the homeless and the disabled and the orphans all through the country, and, and let me tell you something, where we go to feed people on a Christmas day, and I want to say it, because my little son grew up to be a big man every Christmas, Melissa Dasarat, she was a journalist with CNMG. And her first interview, we talk about it all the time, was a Christmas morning in the rain, standing on Independence Square with me and my friends and my family, Jericho Project, feeding homeless, Christmas Day. So you, all those who, more than me, I cool. But there are plenty of people in the church ringing Papa God ears, and in the car park, blowing the horn to get out first. And you see me? I have no time with hypocrites. And Jesus Christ is somebody that I still respect. And I've studied his life. And I'm telling, and I keep saying, that the entire Bible, if it's a true recording of his life, there's only one group of people that he ever, ever castigated and cussed. It was hypocrites. Call them broods of vipers and empty tombs. I'll never forget that. But anyway, you have enough stunting politicians. I mean, look, Basdeo Pandey and Michaela. Ask Michaela a question. I, I was waiting to see the copy and paste media. So you all have a plan, you all have a policy, you all have an idea. That don't matter. When fool the people is the order of the day. Fool them. I felt like when they let me put a post about make Dukaran the Prime Minister now. So we can reorganize the constitution. These jackasses have no idea what they're talking about, you know. Not one of them have a plan. You ask Winston Dukaran, no. How would you fix Trinidad and Tobago? For all the knowledge and for all the degrees, he don't have a plan. The Congress of the people don't have a plan. The only reason the Progressive Empowerment Party has a plan is I was writing a book called Reinventing Trinidad and Tobago, Reboot the Republic. And I was writing that book for a decade. And I was studying every single problem Trinidad had. Everyone. And was able to study and to talk to people. When I was thinking about prosecution, I talked to a DPP. When I was talking about, about, about courts, I talked to appeal court judges and high court judges. I sat with people in every walk and sphere of life to drill down and to get a better understanding of every single thing that was going on in Trinidad Tobago to be able to write those policies. It took a lot of work and a lot of my life and a lot of my time. But to fix Trinidad and Tobago, you have to be willing to fight friends and family. Because friends and family benefit from the gravy train. People that you formerly were friends and family and enjoy their company, you have to now pass straight. Because they're going to attack you. They're not going to allow you to come and interrupt that feeding. Not at all. So look around Trinidad and Tobago. Look around it. 
I have compared my involvement in politics as me standing in the ocean, arms outstretched, trying to hold back the waves. It's too many things. Somebody has to dedicate the rest of their lives to the black community in Trinidad and Tobago. The black community in Trinidad and Tobago has been in crisis for the past 30 years at least. But they just buried Morgan Job. And Morgan Job was the only person of any ilk that had the balls to say it. But when Amory Brown told me I wasn't black enough to talk about black people, and then I was watching Morgan Job, who was very black, and they rejected him too, I was wondering, who gets to bell this cat? Who gets to say that the Afro-Trinidadian community is in crisis? There are PNM people walking around Trinidad and Tobago telling you, them is not Trinidad African, them is small islanders, Eric Williams bring here to vote. These small islands have 20 and 30,000 people. We're talking about 700,000 people. Did Eric empty the Caribbean? That's what he did. All the other islands outside, they're empty now of people. Stop bullshitting yourself. Black people in a condition because black people doing black people wrong. And that have to stop. And the only way you're going to stop, I think, because you can have an argument about the Jews and the Palestines and the Germans and the Jews and the North Koreans and the South Koreans, everybody who vexed with everybody. The Hutus and the Tutsis, you could find the, the Muslims and the Hindus in Pakistan and India, you could find a conflict anywhere. And both sides could justify their reason to fight war. Both sides. And they could, they could hammer it home. And not one could tell you how wars could end. Because wars don't end. The only way war ends is if one side lose all. Triumph to the victor goes the spoils. That's the history of the world. It's not worked for us. We are in the age of enlightenment, the age of intelligence, the age of information. The average Trinidadian, you see this? This phone? The computing power of that phone 30 years ago would have required a building the size of Central Bank Tower. One kilobyte was a reel of tape. You ever saw the machines that used to read the reel of tape, reels of tape? This have, a, this have gigs. This have gigs. It would have required Central Bank Tower, maybe a next building, to make this phone. Everybody walking around in Trinidad and Tobago with a smartphone doing stupidness on it. Because we can learn. My phone teaches me every day. When I go to the gym, my phone plays. I don't want anybody to ever take my headphones out because they'll hear that I'm learning stuff. I want you to teach me what I look at more on TV than anything else. I mean, I watch some bullshit and some and comedies to fall asleep. But, but of any genre, I watch documentaries. I like to learn. I like to know. I like to understand where things come from. I want to tell you something. War will never end until everybody say, listen, we, we all fucked up. We all made a mess. We all have done things that we could be ashamed of. And I think that going forward from here, step one should be, let's stop that. Let's agree to stop that. Because you see, and I want to drill it back to beat them on East Port of Spain. They don't want to be killing one another, but they have no choice. And the difference between Barack Obama and one of those gun-toting people in Beaton is hope and opportunity. Check it. We all have the same potential. We all have the same ability to critically deduce and logically think. We can all assimilate fact. All children born a blank slate no child, none, has religious intolerance or a racist bone in their body. Not one. And yet, our country, that what that the advertisers who sell you wrong, tell you the Ganges has meet the Nile, bullshit in you. The Ganges don't meet the Nile. If the Ganges was meeting the Nile, 
Trinidadians would not be so poor in a country this rich. It's not possible. It is impossible for us to have the level of poverty and suffering we have in Trinidad and Tobago. It's not possible. And all of the criminality that spills over into murdering one another and robbing people and killing people, the anger in this country is unheralded. People are bitter. And it is deliberate. It is deliberate. And the problem I have is that at the highest level, where the money getting stolen, as racist as they are, they don't care. You could call me nigger, call me coolie, call me camel head, call me anything you want, Chinese, Chinese, never die. We don't care. Just keep the billions flowing, bro. We've never in this country had a conversation that started with what is Trinidad and Tobago and where does it want to go? We've never had that conversation. We've had Rowley saying Kamala Thief and Kamala saying that Manning Thief and Manning saying that Panda Thief and Panda saying that Manning Thief and Manning saying that Robbie Thief and Robbie saying that Chambers Thief and Chambers Thief and, and, and all of that bullshit. We've buried people who've been ringing that alarm for decades. And nothing's changed. The people on top and their ancestors and their inheritors and their heirs, they've been moving behind the scenes with all of these jackasses. With all of them. Basil Pande promised the nation that he would find the parasitic oligarchy. And apparently, they were on a golf course somewhere because he golfed his way through his whole term in office. Stephen Cadiz. Stephen Cadiz, who has made it hard to be a light-skinned activist in Trinidad and Tobago because Stephen Cadiz dragged Keith Noel's black ass through Port of Spain for a stunt. Keith Noel, 186, 236, what was the number? Drag his bones through town for a stunt. And get into office and forget Keep Noel name. And come back out and trying to fool people to believe that he has anything to say that anybody needs to hear. No. Ramdahin Dennis is an intelligent guy, agriculture, he's into agriculture, and somebody we would like to have on the PV. But Ramdahin is advocating for talking to the smaller parties. And I want to know which parties Ram Rahim is talking about. Because I don't trust any politicians in Trinidad and Tobago. Not one. I wouldn't put my neck on a block for nobody. I have seen criminality at government level in front of my eyes. I have been threatened on so many occasions for so many things. And I used to, I, I thought that the Bologna have one jackass and it's me. And I bless God every day for the handful of people who join me at the top level of the Progressive Empowerment Party. I never want to form a political party. We try to form the Third Force Movement. Me, Timothy Hammersmith, Gary Griffith, the NAR. We wanted to try and bring all of these personalities together. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You can't bring names. You can't say Michaela and Selby and Ganga and Carlos. A party. A sort of party. As a group of people whose names you know. A political party has an ideology. It has an overarching philosophy. It has policies and plans. It could begin a conversation with you. What and who is Trinidad and Tobago and where we want to go. The Progressive Empowerment Party could do that. That work was being done for over a decade. They said, no, come. Tell no, I'm doing this. When I stopped writing my blog, and I was writing two columns a week for the Mirror and one a week in either the Guardian or the Express, when I stopped counting my blog, I had crossed a million words. That's four times what you need for a doctorate. I had crossed one million words. Ford can't make me in CNC3. 
I was sitting to go on with TV. He come in there with Anna Ram Logan and Jack Warner at the height of the People's Partnership. And that's the first time I meet Fouad Khan. And he say, use the man writing all them things in the papers. I say, use the man fucking up the healthcare in this country. Anna Ram Logan stepped back. They didn't understand who I was, you know. I was one of those stunting politicians looking to make friends, you know. Gary Griffith only get me to come on board as his communications advisor because I believed Gary Griffith, you know. But I went to talk to Gary Griffith about something called Literacy First, which was a program to make literacy job one in the country because half of the reason that most of those people in Beta Mobile Lab until C Lots and East Port of Spain are so suffering. Most of them are illiterate, functional, and otherwise. So they can't advance. And they have girls who see nice things, who want shoes with the bottom of the heel red now as a fashion. So when your girl want things, you as a boy, you can't deliver enough pizza for Mario Sabga Abud and make enough money to buy a fancy handbag. These people have no chance. Gary put me to talk to a man named Uniwini or some shit from the NJAC who was his number two. I can't even remember his name. The man used to fall asleep in the meetings. Changing your name to an African name and not giving two ass about African people. National Joint Action Committee, my half red ass. I see every political organization in this country as one stunt and circus act after next. The People's National Movement, the only people they ever move is their friends and finances bank accounts. Black people have never benefited in this country from the People's National Movement. And worse, the United National Congress. And the United National Congress just have to make sure that Indian people get it a little better than black people. Because they knew that once Indian people, with all their pride, get it a little better than black people, and black people would have to suck salt and suffer and Indian people would have been able to drive around town and stunt. And that is this country. That is the whole country. And Syrian people keep to themselves. And say, if black people and Indian people so stupid to be fighting a war that do exist, let me focus on that $60 billion treasury. Let me focus on that. Let me focus on that. When they gave Mario's, you see, they have a little stunting jackass telling people as bad talk Syrians, but I don't, you know. I eat most of my meals every single day from a Syrian organization. Ioli, Maria's Bakery, the little Syrian fella who opened behind Scotia Bank in Starlight, he's seen me at least once a week. I like Syrian food, and I like, they give good service, Adams. I will never go anything that have anything to do with Mario's and the mood, ever. Because he is a stunting, arrogant, narcissistic, egotistical jackass. And he did more to separate the races with his bullshit comment on Anthony Bourdain's show about the Syrians did well and raised the 1%. And, and, and you know, when Basdeo Pandey did that little stunt with Ernst and Young, was it Ernst and Young or PricewaterhouseCoopers? One of those alphabet bandit facilitation organizations. Did a thing called Entrepreneur of the Year and gave Mario Sabga Abuda Entrepreneur of the Year plaque. And you know what I said? Then, and I said it more when he spoke to Boudin and he told Boudin, I built 126,000 12 years, 10 years. And my mind will call the maths quickly. It's easy arithmetic. Mario built a store month. Mario Sabga Abud shouldn't just have entrepreneur of the year he should get entrepreneur of a lifetime they should put him to teach university Mario Sanga Abud should be able to tell everybody else in business because I know plenty of people in business that want to expand they can open a branch a year Mario do one a month for 10 years Mario can educate the nation Mario should be able to tell every businessman in Trinidad and Tobago how he access the credit and the finance to build a branch amount. Let him do that. Don't just boast that you're 126 branch in 10 years. Tell us how. We want to learn. 
We want to do it too. Because that is high magic. Building a store month. But you see, all they decided to do was control the media. Get some little Kamini Maraj, Sheila Rampasad, Keith Smith. They all look like you, song like you a little bit. And throw them in the papers and control what you get to hear. Because if they control your knowledge, you can't go further. You can't ask questions. When the media tell you, well, we spend billions on ships in Ostal, but they ask no question at all. It's just to say it's a fait accompli and you're supposed to say, well, good job or shitty job. Nobody told you that you were allowed to say, who authorized you to do that? Where did that money come from? Where's the allocation in the budget? Where's the oversight? How much is the X factory price to the boats? How much we paid for the boats? Are there any go-betweens? Is there any kickbacks? We should be asking those questions. The media should be asking those questions. But this is not media. This is propaganda machinery. And that's why all those little media girls need to bull all the little political boys. Because they do all of their news reporting flat on their back. And it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. That we have no disconnect. When Asha Javid could be dating the PNM's propaganda minister and want to still be considered a journalist in this country. But she had to know she's a joke. Hema Ranke soon fall out with Gerald Ramdin wife publicly. You interviewing a senator that you sleeping with? Where's the integrity or the ethics in the profession? Somebody, <laughs> you know, and I'm just saying it. Eh? I had to have a lawyer, girl, female lawyer of mine step down from a case that, anyway, because of a sister in law. That. Stink and dirty, stink and dirty. Oh, fuck it. Double M. Hey. Do free them, but run for your life. Do free them, they see, they see, they see. Do free them, but run for your life. Do free them. Right now I'm feeling the tension And it's too much to mention uh, It take up all my attention Holy faith, holy faith Of everything you accuse me And only time you abuse me But now you cannot refuse me Holy faith I was born in a village I lived my upbringing Where God was forgiven So I'm in tune with my spirit I was born as a warrior My father was a sick fighter So why is that no pushover Now we're fighting back I'm hearing them sing. They come out of the bus, man. They close the bed. 
felt it like they want to bust me No matter what they do, me, I don't come to them We be getting on like they want to come for me So tell them come for me Tell them we don't fear nobody All of them who are confront with me Anywhere we go, we fear no man and fear no demon Tell them we don't fear nobody All of them who want to stop me Tell them we don't fear no woman, fear no stick and fear no demon I say Olivier, 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 Olivier We don't come as hard, don't fight them like we made those hard man Shit is sugar. Spread it on your cakes. Use it in your ice cream. They want you to believe the nonsense that passes for government in this country is real. And the only way that can happen is they control every opportunity that you had or have to get information. That is why Johnny Sukaran, aka also known as Faris al Rawi, working overtime to shut down social media. It's only a matter of time before they do some kind of stunt and I expect it from them. You have to understand that they are taking ground from you every day. That property tax is a criminal piece of legislation. Trinidadians have been put against the rope. And Trinidadians don't understand that they're against the rope. Trinidadians are taking it. I watch this stink and disgusting beast face Rhoda Barrett. I mean, Rhoda Barrett ugly in the dark and I despise. Pies that girl, she nasty. And I'll tell you why she nasty. You see, anybody that will sell their brothers and sisters for pieces of silver, she and Marcy are brave boy. And this next one who used to write for the edge I keep forgetting this woman named Maraj. What's her first name? I couldn't believe when in 2015 she was the head of the political news of both CNC3 and TV6. How is that independent media? And I watch the posts on Facebook. And people getting caught up in the bullshit. Like any of it is real. Sunati Maraj. Missing in action. Paid PNM gun. Spent half her life lying down next to Lloyd Bess, who despised the PNM. Sunati, you have Lloyd turning in the grave. We want to do. I cannot fit in with these other politicians. I cannot. It's not who I am. It's not who I am. I can't. And if you have to network yourself and make friends with people, who you despise. I remember watching the movie JFK about the assassination. And the chief lawyer said, have we become what we hold in contempt? That sits on me. The, the, uh, was it Mark Twain? Who it is said? He who would slay monsters should see to it that along the way he doesn't allow himself to become a monster. I want no deals. And I want, I want no association with any former politician of any kind. I want nothing to do with the PNM and the UNC or any version, any offspring of it. I want nothing to do with any of them and anybody that had any association with them. So I am prepared to remain in politics, but I am going to get more and more honest as the days go by because somebody has to be telling you the truth. What takes place in Trinidad and Tobago is every single day they lying to you and advantaging you and setting you against each other and making a mess of this country. <laughs>
but he wasn't doing it the year before until Jack Warner was in play. Jack is in play now. Unleash the Kraken. Send the dogs. And it's like that. When Glenn Ramadan said, not Glenn, Chandra Sharma, I knew, and I called Jerry Hadid, and I said, Jerry, Chandra Sharma is going to be the front page of the newspaper tomorrow. Jerry said, don't study that. Jerry was the Minister of Communication. Chandra Sharma was in his party. Uncle and aunt and cousin and friend and all of them together, both parties, the PNM and the UNC. They are Gillettes in boat, Montanos in boat, Hadids in boat. They're all represented in both of those parties at the level where the decisions are made. The PNM and the UNC, different. If Sunati Maraj could have ran the political reporting news for both CNC3 and TV6, they're different. So I want to ask you a question because you may not be able to link and two little black boys that get killed and beat up last night with all of this. But all of this is fruit of the same poison tree. And this is what we live in with in Trinidad and Tobago. The PNM and the UNC is not the problem, you know. The PNM and the UNC is what we have to go through to unmask the problem. The PNM and the UNC hides the people who run Trinidad and Tobago. The people who call the shots. The people who make sure certain things happen at certain levels in Trinidad and Tobago. Now you have to decide, is it okay for this country to continue to operate like this? Or would you like it run like a real country? Would you like it purged of all of these mocking pretenders who have hijacked Trinidad and Tobago and made a mockery of your democracy? Because if you do, if what you want is a better Trinidad and Tobago, you have to stand up. Nobody else doing it for you. You have to stand up. You. Vernon Dilemma. I saw him on our live just now. Vernon's wife was beaten to death. She died a little while after the beating. They invaded their homes. They tied them up. Vernon Dilemma, who is one of the best known criminal attorneys in this country's history. And and when you hear the story of how they did this, they opened the people's gate and let their dogs out. So the neighbors called to say your dog's in the road. And they sit down and watch to see the response. And Mrs. Dilema came out and got her dogs and took it back inside. The next time they did the same thing. And when she came out to get the dogs again, how the hell this gate opening? They, they took her. And they took her inside. And they beat her and they beat him and they robbed him and they left him tied up and she never recovered and if you knew this woman at all I mean beautiful beautiful soul beautiful soul they beat her to death will the people who ever did that be brought to justice.
Trinidad and Tobago that was set up for certain PNM financers to steal. That is closing down 13 branches and sending hundreds of workers home has as a president. Sarim Naji Al Zubadi, who collects a monthly salary of $250,000 a month plus perks. And come say, only a riot yet. Property tax to pay for that. killed people where they were standing and froze them in eternal grimace. Death was upon them before they could have responded. Life is like that. That's how life is. And this Trinidad and Tobago, this country, is overdue for some natural disaster. What is in place to rescue any of our people? What is in place to deal with anything? Overnight, the mud volcano multiplied in size a thousand times. And that could become something. You don't know. And we don't know. All it takes is an earthquake off our coast that sends a tsunami that swamps the country. This is reality. Trinidad and Tobago now is a country broken by design and allowed by its people. I don't know if we can wake people up to their responsibility, but we are trying. It is not easy. It is not an easy row to hoe. That's an agricultural tool. A hard row to hoe is rows of agriculture where you plant food. Anyway. Let's look at them into the nativity. If thousands of you don't stand up, it doesn't make sense. I mean, we could keep flogging it hard, push hard, and you could sit down, light your Broadway, open your stag, and watch on. Let's see where they're going with that PEP thing. And it's cool. Use us for entertainment. Failing to, re failing to recognize the rescue is not on me, it's on you. Because we can fail. The smart money is on us failing. That's the smart money. And yet, we still push. We still push forward. Now you decide. Do you want to sit down? chilling, pretending everything is normal and watching on, waiting to see what happens, when what happens 
affects you. Don't feel leaving. If you decided no, that's it. I done. I leave in Trinidad. You can't take nothing you have here. Unless you're on the inner circle and have access to that forex. You can sell your house, sell your car, sell your daughter piano and your son football boots. Put all that money in a bank account. But unless you're taking it out of Trinidad and Tobago as TT dollars and Trinidad and Tobago dollars have less value than monopoly money anywhere in the world. Eh? But unless you're taking it out of Trinidad and Tobago as TT dollars, you ain't taking it out at all. Because right now, people drive. Right now, it's already too late. Right now, the government has encircled you and has taken control of every choice that you've had and has left you without hope. So while you're dragging on that Broadway and chugging on that stack, looking on at this jacket, so, you know, you have some good ideas, you know. But it's like saying uh, Vernon Von Brown, who put, the man, put man on the moon, saying you have some good ideas about rockets, you know. Without a staff and a team, we're still just looking up in the sky. Without 20,000 people working on the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer still dreaming about a day he could split the atom. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. To make a better Trinidad and Tobago, it starts with all of us. Progress is impossible without change. And those who can change their minds can change everything. You can't change what's going on around you. Until you start changing what's going on within you, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. In the world, you're just being out sure. Because you see, if you come out, 10,000 of y'all come out this Saturday. If you can look, there be a real change. Within this great land, we come up to young tea. There's birds and bees, rivers and seas. Pretty woman bringing man to the knees. Treasures of this blessed land we always neglect, like Kaiso and Pan. I find it so strange the way we arrange. Still, this nation don't know how to change. Cause some change it might just mean a new car. Change could mean less than a dollar. To most change have this nice scent we usually get from the government. You see, change is something we always say. But every time we change, things remain the same way. Things keep getting worse and worse. So this is what I propose. Let's change the change for our better nation. Change the change for all foundations. Change the change so that we could say that this nation here came from quite down there. I say change the change within the school systems. Stop changing ministers and change what we teach them. But things won't change despite all we do. If change doesn't start with you. Yeah, yeah. And we could bust every mark. And you could sit down there and smoke every cigarette. And we could let go every file. And you could drink every beer in our case. But if you don't get involved, nothing will change. And after you run out of beers and you run out of cigarettes, the same shit that we bust the mark on will continue. So it's just entertainment. And if you're so foolish to believe that you don't have a part to play, you ever hear the saying, every raindrop contributes to the flood? If you don't know that you have to disturb your comfort zone to create a comfort zone down the road, let me tell you now. Eh? Because those who stealing and romping, plundering and pillaging, they motivated, they organized, they don't sleep late, they planning right now. What I doing this, trying to wake your lazy ass up, they sitting down planning and plotting for your lazy ass. So you are to decide, because if you don't stand up for yourself and your family, you are going to lose everything, every chance, every hope, and Trinidad and Tobago is going to fail as a nation in quick, quick time, Argentina woke up one morning, the price of bread was $3. By lunchtime, it was $30. By mid-afternoon, it was $300. And by nighttime, it was $3,000 for the loaf of the same bread. That's how an economy collapses. Colin Butt and his crew, 
They know what they're doing, you know. Some of you walking around thinking, think good by me. I have a little business running, I have a nice little job, I have some money in the bank. Your money in your bank could become worthless. People have control and say over everything that you are. You can't spend your money. You can't get value for your money. You can't give it away. What do you do? If you choose to continue to sit down and pretend racist voting will one day save you, I have a bridge to sell here. And if you believe that doing nothing at all will somehow prevent you from protect you from the coming storm, sit there, now. wait for it. This Saturday at noon, we are open to the public and everybody is invited to come and make your voices heard and to send a message to the PLM and the UNC and the unseen parasitic oligarchy that controls them. Come out in your thousands. You see, from the moment you make that play, just that play, just show up, they have to change their game. From that moment, they realize the game has changed. They have to up, up their performance. You have to just show up. Because for as long, they're counting on your apathy. They're counting on you to not give a shit. And as long as you don't give a shit, they can do what they want. Keith Rowley could pick up $3 million that he does not have the authority to spend and give it to Maxi Coffee. Hold on. Take that. You could call it medical, but it's still theft. Rowley, you love your the fraudulent conversion. Commissioner of Police was supposed to go and interview Keith Rowley. But in China, they go to the Commissioner of Police working for Keith Rowley. Because you're on his 13th appointment and Keith Rowley could fire him. Keith Rowley could cancel his appointment. Kamala know that. Kamala wouldn't make fuss about it. Where's the march for that? No march for that. Because UNC and PNM, two sides, the same cancerous coin. The country has been mismanaged to the point where if you don't stand up and say, listen, enough. I want to tell you this, sir. There is nothing that the PNM and the UNC could do to undo what they've already done. It. You are at the point where Trinidad and Tobago has to bring them to justice. You know. Keith Rowley and Kamala Pasan Bissessa must face investigation you know, and the entire cabinet and the entire government. That's where we're supposed to be. But you're not going to get that until you vote them out. Because putting the rat in charge of the cheese leaves you with no power. So understand that. Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue. Come out in your numbers. Every week there is a meeting. Come and be a part of that. Come and be a part of the change you want for a better country. Because if you don't, crapper will smoke all the way pipe. Believe it or not. Stay safe, Trinidad and